Going Linux, episode 307. Today's backup technology. Welcome to the Going Linux podcast. I'm your host, Larry Bushy. And I'm your co-host, Bill. Whether you are new to Linux, upgrading from Windows to Linux, or just thinking about moving to Linux, this podcast will help you with valuable information and advice that will help you in going Linux. We hope that you find this and all our episodes helpful in learning about Linux and open source applications and using them to get things done. In today's episode, a review of today's backup technology. Hello, Larry. Hey, Bill. How are things going for you? Good. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy it's now getting into fall because mm-hmm. I can just say one thing. Pumpkin spice coffee. <laughs> yes, and uh, pumpkin spice beer and all kinds of stuff like that going on with pumpkins. Not that I really care for pumpkin spice coffee or pumpkin spice beer, but uh, a lot of people do. <laughs> pumpkin spice linux hey released once a year <laughs> limited edition mm. it doesn't do anything except just displays a pumpkin with some spice on it yeah we could uh you know color it orange that would be the uh, background color and uh oh wait i think ubuntu did that one <laughs> they kind of moved anyhow <laughs> Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Oh, man. You sure knew how to start the morning, and it is morning. Uh, but how has your week been? Uh, great week. How about you, Bill? About the same. Okay, now that we've covered all the highlights. <laughs> uh, anyway, so what are we talking about today? Well, we are talking about backup strategies for your computer using today's technology. I know we've talked about backups and backup software in at least three previous episodes of our podcast, but it's been a while, and the last time we produced a full-fledged episode on this topic was in 2008, if you can believe it. Now, wait a minute. 2008. Eight. I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Well, you didn't talk about it with me, so that would be what, <laughs> right. Tom? That would have been with Tom. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely. It's definitely time we take a first look at backups and at least mention some of the current applications and methods that are available in 2016. Let's get started. It's over to you, Larry. Okay. So we're going to start with how do I know what and where to back up. So backing up information on your hard drive is something you should be doing on a regular basis, and that's critical for anybody who uses a computer routinely. You've spent hours on end creating the information that's on your hard drive, and much of that information is extremely important and irreplaceable stuff. You should be routinely backing up at least your new data files on a weekly basis. And just to define data files, that includes documents, spreadsheets, anything that you have created on your hard drive is a data file, no matter what it is, a photo, anything like that. Oh, okay. So when we first started talking about backups years ago, well, you started talking about backups. um, (laughs) The only realistic way to really perform a backup on a home computer was to what? Save it to the data to a CD, DVD. Ooh, how about a zip drive or yeah. better yet a jazz drive i remember those yeah, yeah. or worse still 1.44 megabyte floppies yes <laughs> or, or the smaller ones that came before that <laughs> Ooh. Um, yeah. so today uh, your best option is to use an external hard drive if you don't have a network attached storage or the acronym we use is nas uh, drive on your home network you can also get an external drive for, for terabytes of the storage capacity or or even an inexpensive portable USB external drive with gigabytes of storage. Yeah, storage prices have dropped. Yes. Uh, on a typical CD, you can store up to about 700 megabytes of yeah, information. Yeah, megabytes, yeah. <laughs> megabytes, yes. Right. Of information 
while DVDs can store 8.4 gigabytes. Blu-ray discs are the newest type of optical media, and they can hold up to 50 gigabytes of data. Yeah, Blu-rays aren't really all that popular, are they? No, 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 but... Uh, okay, we're going to move on. For the price, I don't know, but... Yeah. With the size of files these days, you might get one or two video files on a DVD. Yeah, because 8.4 movies, what, about 4, four gigabytes, yeah. somewhere around there? Mm-hmm. 3.6. Yeah, 3, 4, depending on yeah. the length of the movie, yeah. If you have a file that is larger than 700 megabytes, like a moderate LibreOffice Impress presentation file, or a writer document with graphics, an ordinary CD has no hope of holding even one whole file. Now, wait a minute. How big are these... Uh, <laughs> this LibreOffice Impress. I've never used it. Can they get that big? Yeah, they can if you've got graphics and stuff in them. And, uh, well, think about it. It's a presentation, and if okay. you've got pictures, yeah, sometimes people embed movies into their presentations so they can get huge. So, uh, yeah. So the uh, LibreOffice Impress, not meaning to get off topic here, but what's its equivalent in the Microsoft Version. It would be PowerPoint. PowerPoint. Okay. Now I know right. PowerPoints can get big. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. All right. Yeah. And so when you're backing up your data files, it's not always necessary to back up every single file that you have on your hard drive, although it's a good idea to do that <laughs> monthly. Um, and as a listener of the Going Linux podcast, you may be a Linux user or a computer user interested in switching to Linux. And if that's you on your computer, Few files, if any, outside of your home directory really need to be backed up at all. If a disaster were to happen and you lost your computer or your hard drive, you could simply reinstall the Linux operating system in well under an hour and then restore the backed up contents of your home directory. Your home directory contains the information that you've created yourself, including things like your mail file and settings and preferences and most of the applications that you're running. In episodes 29, 31, 106, and now this episode of our podcast, we've discussed specific Linux applications that you can use to accomplish your backups. Hmm. Okay. Now, if you have a home network, you may be lucky enough to own a multi-gigabyte hard drive accessible to any computer, yes please, on <laughs> the network. Large external drives have become so inexpensive. And I looked up that, just to give you an idea, it's like four cents a megabyte or something like that. It's ridiculously yeah. cheap. Right. Uh, uh, so it is wise to include an external drive in your budget if you are buying a new computer, which, you know, if you buy a new computer, buy a new external drive. Makes sense. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, instead of being stored on your computer's hard drive, these files you can copy to the external or network drive, and are, they are stored safely off of your computer. That way, if something happens to your computer's hard drive, or if you have a laptop stolen, all your files are safely stored on the external device. And that, uh, I think you have a setup similar to that, don't you, Larry? Yep. As a matter of fact, I have created an article on our website. Actually, I've updated an article from back in 2008 on our website and put in there an illustration of my um, file manager on Ubuntu Mate, which is the distribution that I use right now. And it shows me taking my entire home directory and copying it to an external three terabyte drive that I have shared on my network. It's a network attached storage. And something we should mention, although we've been talking about hardware options for making backups, is something that's equivalent to a network drive, well, sort of, uh, and that is to put your information on online storage on a service like Dropbox or Box or Google Drive or something like that. And the advantage to this, of course, is that using this kind of a backup allows you 
to take your files and have them stored on the internet, a completely different location than where your computer is located. So outside of your home, outside of your local network. So even if the worst were to happen and you lost everything in a fire or flood, your backups would be safe. Yeah, that uh, I actually use that method uh, quite a bit. Um, I am test driving the Amazon service now because they, uh, against the Google Drive that we usually use. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's too early to tell which one I prefer. But it's really nice because if you think about it, if your computer is stolen or just completely breaks, all your important files can be accessed from your smartphone, can be accessed from a Chrome, can be accessed, you know, so it's kind of nice to know that they're there and they're, they're safe. Um, and it's also, you can kind of use maybe like a redundancy of uh, having, uh, an external drive and, um, uh, online storage. And the reason I say is if your house burns down and everything's, you know, yes, you, you still have a copy of your work. <laughs> so, right. You yeah, absolutely. You can use them in conjunctions. They're not exclusive of each other. Right. Good point. Now, that kind of leads into the next part we're going to talk about is backing up your computer is very cheap to the vast disaster recovery insurance. As we mentioned, one way to back up inexpensively is to get a large FireWire or USB 3 external hard drive and copy everything in your home directory to it on a regular basis. Perhaps the easiest way to use the backup software that comes pre-installed with your Linux distribution. At least monthly, you should make a complete backup of everything important on your hard drive using backup software or simply copying it to a disk, a second hard drive, or a network drive. The Linux applications such as the pre-installed Linux Mint Backup Tool, the pre-installed Ubuntu Backups application, Simple Backup, rsync can automate these backups for you so it's like set it and forget it i guess <laughs> mm -hmm. yep uh you do this so that if your computer or hard drive were to be stolen destroyed or damaged beyond repair you would have a disaster recovery copy for a disaster recovery copy you could restore your entire home directory to the condition it was in at the time you did your last backup now, if you do such a complete backup monthly, the worst case is that you have to restore only one month's worth of data from your incremental data backups. Not too shabby. Well, I had to learn that the hard way. So, yeah, okay. You know, I'm I'm horrible at backup. That's why I try to remember every six months or so. Oh, I mean, every month. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah every, every month. Every month, yes. Every copy all my month. important files. But you know what I do, uh, Larry, that uh, a lot of times I save uh, the files that are important to mm -hmm. a, a folder on my computer that automatically syncs to the cloud. Yes, yes. And that's, again, another form of automated backup. Yeah. So when I save it, like I save all of my side of the uh, recordings uh, into a a folder that is automatically synced um, every night up mm -hmm. into the cloud. And so that just kind of, and pictures and stuff like that, they all go in that folder under sometimes under different categories, but it, 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 it's got it set up where it just automatically up, uploads it. So yeah, that's kind of nice. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and you know, in, in that last section there where we're talking about, uh, backup being a cheap disaster recovery insurance. Um, I've included in the article that I wrote, and that's, you know, we'll have a link to that article in the show notes, of course, um, some screenshots of some of the software that you just mentioned, the, the software that comes pre-installed in some of the um, uh, com uh, Linux distributions that are out there. Uh, the first screenshot is actually of the Linux Mint backup tool. And you'll see that it's really got four buttons. One is to back up your files. 
The second one is to back up your software selections. This doesn't actually back up the installation of the software, but it backs up a list of what you have installed. And then two other buttons to restore the files and to restore the software selection. So presuming that you've created a new install or re, you know replaced your stolen computer and installed Linux Mint again, you can uh, click the restore files and it'll restore all your data files in your home directory and then click restore software selections and it will schedule the uh, installation of all of the applications that you had uh, previously installed in the old computer. So that's a pretty effective tool to use. And a second screenshot, we can certainly not include screenshots for every single backup tool that's out there. But the second one is for the backups application that's included in Ubuntu Mate. And I think they use the same one in all flavors of Ubuntu. Uh, it's actually an application called Deja Dupe, and it is based on a command line application called Duplicity. So Deja Dupe is a front end to that, and that's installed by default on Ubuntu, and it's simply called Backups in the menus. And there are several selections there to actually do your backups on an automated basis, really just two buttons, a restore and a backup now button, uh, but other selections that you can choose to automate the backup, schedule them for certain times of the day, certain days of the week, if you want to do that. And uh, you can turn that on or off with a switch that they provide in the upper right hand corner of the window. So it's actually very, very simple to use in both cases. There's no excuse. Wait a minute four buttons i'm not a nuclear engineer i can't hit four <laughs> buttons <laughs> hey yeah. that's just too many buttons get it down to one and you just say hey stupid press me well hey this is getting as close as we can get i think you know we need a big button in the middle of the screen saying go <laughs> <laughs> so in other words i'm pretty much out of luck yeah, so hopefully we've impressed on you the importance of backing up. Now the question, we've kind of danced around this, how often should I back up? And uh, yeah, Bill, if you're backing up every six months, you know, maybe a little more frequently than that. But in reality... Wait, wait a minute. Well, now we have Bill's backup uh -huh. schedule, and then we have Larry's backup schedule. Right. And I'm always wrong, so yours must be the right one. It must be. At least my recommendation should be, right? So, so yeah. So, in other words, yeah. Listen to Larry. Do as Larry says. Don't do as Bill says or Bill does. So, how often should we really back up? In all well, seriousness. Yeah, in all seriousness and in reality, how often you should back up depends on several factors. In general, the more you use your computer, the more critical the work you're doing, the more often you should back up. And you know, if you're just using your computer for browsing the internet, you never save anything, you never do anything of any importance on there. And of course, importance is a relative term, I guess. But if you're not creating anything on that computer, then you probably don't need to back it up. But if you save anything, if you create anything, you write anything down and save it to the hard drive. Uh, and the more you do that, the more you should be backing up. So you should use that external drive and or your online storage to make a complete backup of your entire hard drive. I recommend every month. And as we've said, you can very likely automate that process using the backup software pre-installed or available in your Linux distributions package repository. You can even set up some of the software so that it copies only the new files and updates new versions of files on your computer rather than backing up all the old files that haven't changed every time as well. And of course, you can set it up so that it never deletes anything from the copy so that you have copies of old files, even the ones that maybe you have deleted on your hard drive that maybe you didn't want to delete and you need to go find and uh, recover from your backup. And what a lifesaver that can be. Well, you know, that come into play for us. Mm -hmm. If you remember uh, about a year and a half ago, Skype updated their software for Linux. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And the new one did not work. And we could not find the old one until you said, oh, wait a minute. I have a copy of the old software still yep. saved 
in a backup so you went and grabbed it sent me a copy and we were back up and running of course the only thing annoying us is would you like to, to update to the newest version no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every time you started yeah, it every yes. time you started but the old version works flawlessly but the new one was inherently broken for like i think a month because it yeah. just didn't work didn't work yeah so, that's right you know if if you have a program you really depend on it's not a bad idea to keep a uh, a copy of the older software that works a hundred percent because you know sometimes they do break stuff. Mm-hmm. Like me. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> so to summarize, use an external hard drive at least or online storage to make a monthly full backup. Mm-hmm. And every week you should, and I'm not sure everybody does this, but. Here's the recommendation. Every week, you should be backing up your critical files in an incremental backup. Uh, And an incremental backup is uh, backing up only what's changed since your last full backup. Uh, And do that on the external storage device and or to your online storage on a weekly basis, and you'll be all set. Yeah, sounds uh, sounds like the right way to do it. Yeah, and if you can automate it, that's even better. Mm -hmm. Now, I know our next episode is a listener's feedback, but I I also wanted to to let you know very soon after that, uh, since we're talking, you know, kind of revisiting old topics, I thought it might be a good idea to have one on security again and how that's changed. Okay. So after the next listener feedback, um, I've got some security info that, you know, because things have changed, that it might be good to just kind of refresh and, and see how things are now in Linux. What do you think, Larry? I think that's a great idea. Okay. So let's go for it. I've, I've kind of ruined uh, you, uh, you know, the, the suspense, but maybe we'll build up some people who say, oh, yeah, that's one I'm going to definitely avoid because that's boring. <laughs> <laughs> but so, Security? I don't know. It's yeah. one of the more important topics these days. So, what is our, uh, seriously, our next ep- uh, episode is a. Listener feedback. Okay. So, until then, you can go to our website at go. Go, what's the website name again? GoingLinux.com for articles and show notes, as well as links to download and subscribe. And we are the website for computer users who just want to use Linux to get things done. If you like, you can participate directly with our friendly and helpful community members by joining the discussion in our Going Linux podcast Google Plus community. Until next time, thanks for listening. 73. Theme music provided by Mark Blasco at podcastthemes.com. Going Linux, Episode 307. Today's Backup Technology. Welcome to the Going Linux Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Bushy. And I'm your co-host, Bill. Whether you are new to Linux, upgrading from Windows to Linux, or just thinking about moving to Linux, this podcast will help you with valuable information and advice that will help you in Going Linux. We hope that you find this and all our episodes helpful in learning about Linux and open source applications and using them to get things done. In today, where to back up. So backing up information on your hard drive is something you should be doing on a regular basis. And that's critical for anybody who uses a computer routinely. You've spent hours on end creating the information that's on your hard drive. And much of that information is extremely important and irreplaceable stuff. You should be routinely backing up at least your new data files on a weekly basis. And just to define data files, that includes documents, spreadsheets, anything that you have created on your hard drive is a data file no matter what it is, a photo, anything like that. 
Oh, okay. This episode, a uh, review of today's backup technology. Hello, Larry. Hey, Bill. How are things going for you? Good. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy it's now getting into fall because mm-hmm. I can just say one thing. Pumpkin spice coffee. <laughs> yes, and uh, pumpkin spice beer and all kinds of stuff like that going on with pumpkins. Not that I really care for pumpkin spice coffee or pumpkin spice beer, but uh, a lot of people do. <laughs> pumpkin spice Linux. Hey, released once a year. <laughs> Limited edition. Mm. It doesn't do anything except just... I know we've talked about backups and backup software in at least three previous episodes of our podcast, but it's been a while, and the last time we produced a full-fledged episode on this topic was in... 2008, if you can believe it. Now, wait a minute. 2008. I wasn't... Mm -hmm. Well, you didn't talk about it with me, so that would be what, (laughs) Right. That would have been with Tom. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely time we take a first look at backups and at least mention some of the current applications and methods that are available in 2016. Let's get started. It's over to you, Larry. Okay, so we're going to start with how do I know what and displays a pumpkin with some spice on it. Yeah, we could, uh, you know, color it orange. That would be the uh, background color. And, uh, oh, wait, I think Ubuntu did that once. Didn't they? <laughs> they kind of moved Anyhow, <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. Oh, man, you sure know how to start the morning, and it is morning. Uh, but how has your week been? Uh, great week. How about you, Bill? About the same. Okay, now that we've covered all the highlights. <laughs> uh, anyway, so what are we talking about today? Well, we are talking about backup strategies for your computer using today's technology. 